I'm uh, Sjort van Duren. I'm an uh, urban planner. I work a lot on cycling projects for the last uh, decade and a half. And I work at uh, Royal Haskoning DHV, which is a consultancy and engineering company based in the Netherlands. Yes. Four lanes over there, segregated facilities. This narrows back to two lanes here. Ah. All the way to the city center. But the cars at the car lane, there's just a curb, there's no parking lane. There are no incidental movements, there's nothing actually to obstruct flow of traffic. And by doing so, the capacity of the road is really high, even with two lanes. And by removing, for example, a left, a left, a left turning lane or having a, a dedicated also uh, control signals, we can keep the, the traffic flowing and we do not need four lanes. And that's the main thing, because if we need four lanes, we cannot have the segregated facility, we cannot have the parking, we cannot have the the, the full path and the quality it is now. Right. So here you see that actually traffic management of a car really helps yeah. improve uh, the quality of the cyclists and the traffic. Yeah. And this is then an example where there's a small measure here, but it is right in, right out only. But reversible for cyclists. Big, big intersection. Well, big. Uh, there's a lot of things going on here. Including noisy cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> welcome to the Netherlands. Welcome to the... Well, welcome anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Cities aren't noisy, cars are noisy. <laughs> but the interesting thing is what you see here is on that yeah. side, you see on the left, you see the five meter bump out of a typical protected intersection where you can see that the cars come into a 90 degree angle. They can slow down, they can stop without impeding the traffic flow behind them and they can see the cyclists. Mm -hmm. It is there because there is a conflict because the right turn in car traffic and the oncoming or the ongoing cyclists, they both have green at the same time. Right. So you need to bump out. If you look at the other side of the intersection, you see that there's a dedicated right turn lane and there is not a five meter space. Right. But the traffic light is signalized in a way that only will uh, that when cyclists have a red light, only then cars will get a green light. Right. So you do not need a fully bump out five meter style there, because you have this uh, the the, um, uh, uh, the signalized. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm buffer. Now, yeah, it's a signalized. Yeah. yeah, it's a. It, you've got that. The, the timing yeah. is done. The separated and timing it, it was, is done. There's yeah. a separated phasing in the yeah. cyclist. <laughs> yeah. And you can also see. A very typical thing about Dutch is clearance times. We have got very low clearance times and we can actually clear intersections uh, in zones. So you can see that sometimes you can, you, a car already starts driving before a car has left the intersection. That right, also yeah. improves capacity and throughput again without reducing safety, uh, which might feel in a way. You can see that this one is pretty dynamic because you can see the lights. And Okay, now they get a green light. So if there's a right turn car, he might get a green light or he might not. At this point, he isn't. But this is dynamic. So this this always changes based on the traffic demand. If it signalizes a car, it will will do whatever is necessary. So you see that he didn't give a right light, a right turn because there are like five or six cars. Hey, and he's doing an illegal thing. Don't do that. <laughs> that actually killed someone a few years ago. Yeah. That movement. Doing that. Because you see that there is a slip lane. Yeah. But that is signalized to prevent uh, uh, separation and signalizing. Mm -hmm. But with a, with a fire van is now, when they when they cross, they also get a green light. Right. So that's not, not separated. So there was a big German trigger thing who made an illegal right turn and yeah. uh, hit a cyclist. Okay, and now you see that the cars get a green light, free, really short, only a few seconds just for the two cars. And the cyclists have to wait. And now they immediately get a green light well, the main direction for cars is already turning red, and now they're getting green. So it's right. really punk punk. Yeah, good, it's really quick action. Really quick yeah, action yeah. And yeah, quick clearance times. Yeah. Quick clearance times, but also really good detection. So if it detects yeah. two cars, it gives green light to two cars. Um, so there's, so in, in terms of a, a compare this to the US style intersection, mm -hmm. you see immediately that the, that the throughput is a lot higher. Yeah. 
and we we do not need two left turn lanes here. Yeah. We need one. We can provide the segregation. It's not perfect. It yeah, yeah. Take, check all the boxes because if you can see there on the, on the far corner, there's no segregation. You're right. Uh, but it works. Yeah. And it's a very busy point. And the one accident I told you that was actually because someone not using the intersection in the right way. Right. And now it's really interesting. Look now, now the cycle with the cycle is going on. So the van, he goes, she comes. It's not. It's, it's something we try to avoid, but I think. It, and decent queuing of you know students getting to school and other people getting to work and it's just like yeah decent uh, queuing on all sides for, for, by the cyclists yeah uh, for everyone yeah, yeah yeah but they know they don't have to wait that long exactly to get a no, green it, it, it queues up and then it's and then boom you clear out yeah, yeah. protected roundabout. One of the main things is, I think you can see it right there, there's, uh, the cycle lane is about four to six meters away from the power lane, allowing cars to come to a full stop when exiting the roundabout and give priority to the cyclists. There are two main advantages to that. The first is that when the car uh, uh, stops, there's a 90, 90 degree side of the cyclist and it's not at the back of him. Right. The second advantage is if a car stops, he doesn't the big flow of, uh, uh, of car traffic. So uh, there is the psychological pressure on the car driver is a lot less when he wants to stop. So you do not be flow, so you can just come to a full stop, let the cyclists and pedestrians pass by, and then you can keep them going. Uh, so that's a four to six meters uh, distance between the cycle lane and the, and the road. The second thing is, which is really important, the, the rate eye of the, the roundabout are really narrow, so you have to slow down as a car driver, you cannot speed through it. Right. But you see the curb in the middle, and you can actually use the curb uh, if you have got, a, for example, a semi or a bus, you've got 16 to, to 30 buses an hour per direction on this roundabout. But buses and semis can use the curbs to, to navigate anyway. It's deliberately on the inside, because it narrows down the roundabout even more. And you can see that speeds are slow. Mm -hmm. We give slow, the outcome is relatively um, uh, moderate. So uh, at a regular traffic light intersection, you might have people going 30, 40 miles an hour crossing it. And if you then if you get hit by such a car, you're probably dead. And here the speeds are so low that it just works. Like if you are a little, a little hard to see something like a kid, maybe. Yeah, that, that that's true, but it looks much nicer. But uh, the reason why is because it probably had otherwise had to do a compulsory land purchase from that apartment building. So you, so that's a, a, a trade-off. Uh, same over there. So there are small tweaks which you would like to do better. Yeah. But it's a roundabout takes up much more space than a regular intersection, which is uh, a design challenge. Some people still speed through it, but it, the function is actually, and, it, and the capacity is relatively okay. So it's, it's, it's not as high as a, as a signal as a Dutch style signal light section, but still it has got a quite a good capacity, and, and, and the traffic keeps it going. No small detail. You see that this angle is a little bit off. It's not a really nice degree, yeah. degree angle with the speed right. here. Yeah. So. If a semi or a bus needs to make a right turn, mm -hmm. which it does, the buses don't have to do it mm -hmm. regularly, mm -hmm. but you can come up and you can see that the, yeah. the, the bulb out there, it's lowered and it's transferable by a semi or whatever. Right. So that's how they solve the angle, because the angle, the, the, 
the radar is actually too narrow for a semi. Right. But by, by making it uh, transferable, or uh, drivable. Right, drivable. Drivable. Mountable, curb, yeah. Mountable curve. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, it works. Yeah, I, I have been speaking German in the last week. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really... <laughs> It always takes a few hours or so to get back to my vocabulary. Yeah. I can't with your fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is an interesting uh, cycle path here. Almost like a mountable curb. You can see the sidewalk to the right. He has, a, he has a green light. You can see that our cars turning right. And now it goes well, but he, he is supposed to be he is getting that way of the as well. Yeah. So in, in June, yeah. So in June, so yeah. Why not continue the red stripes on oh, yeah. the side uh, across the intersection? That's a good that's a good question. We've seen a few that have been like that. It, it actually it continues there as well, you see? The idea is that you only continue the red when you have priority when the, when the traffic lights don't function. So this is the main road and this road has priority over the side road. So when the traffic lights don't function, you can still see the sharp teeth and everything and under continuous red that the ongoing cyclist has priority. If you continue to run here, that cyclist might think that he or she has priority. That's so really, in this example, because it's a major road for automobiles, they have priority, therefore we do not see the continuation of the red through the intersection, is what you're saying? Yeah, but it, yeah. But it could also be the other, other way around. If a mm -hmm. major road for cyclists has priority, right. then we see the continuous red for the cyclists and then the cars right. have to go. So it's not necessarily right. because of the cars, but this is just the old road leading all the way to Maastricht, so it's right. going for 100 so it's right. a proper, proper highway, actually. Right, right, right. It's a proper highway, yeah. And so the color is really indicating, clearly indicating, uh, you know, the priority status for the cyclists. If it were red, then they, they have the priority across this area. It's not red, they don't. Exactly. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, it's not well known to all the users. Right. Because, and not even traffic engineers know it, but it's just one of these things which indicate what might happen at the intersection. So if you make a right turn here or whatever, you, the, the color indicates that you might encounter cycles. So it makes people more aware of what happens. It's, it's, so the red color really indicates, hey, you might encounter a cyclist. Yeah. Be aware. And it works. It's really a very important signal color. Yeah. And why do we keep on doing that? Not all, not, we do it at other points besides the intersection. So here it's continuous. Because it just gives a really clear message. This is a cycle path. Mm -hmm. You're on a cycle it's not a road right and this really uh, makes it very clear what what spaces for cyclists what spaces for cars and most uh, pedestrian walkways are being with tiles in, in a grayish color so it's really clear who who gets which space in on the road or right. in the public space yeah yeah good point here and we can see the red brick path And again, the university over here. Excellent connectivity to the university. Yeah, a little 
transit area here near the university. And there's the library. It looks like a very large scale roundabout here. And bike parking here at the library. to a stop and you can see that he, he has a 90 degree side angle of the cyclist cars can still pass behind him now he keeps on going and the course speeds are low he just took a little bit of priority but it actually still functions because the cyclist can see what he's doing can react adapt accordingly right and it works so now you can see the bus navigating the roundabout you can see that he uses a lot of space and a little bit of the curbs to make a turn. Yeah. And on the bottom side, actually the south side, you see that there's a bi-directional cycling path. I was just going to mention that, yeah. Yeah, and the reason why is because on the right hand you see also a bi-directional path leading towards the roundabout. If you want to make a left turn as a cyclist, you can see that on the left side there's also a bi-directional cycle path. Yeah. So either you make a full circle, which is 80% longer than making a left turn. Right. And we actually expect cyclists to do, to make a left turn anyway, because they're humans, and humans are inherently lazy. Right. So we, so uh, here the, 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 it's legalized, uh, having a bi-directional crossing on a roundabout. And the same goes for the east side, on the right hand, you see also bi-directional, but not on the uh, north uh, and the west side, so the upper and the left side reason is that there is no need at that point and that that's the main direction for all the buses because we've got about 25 to 40 buses an hour making a right turn on this roundabout because it's a, it's the main uh, bus uh, route for uh, delivering or bringing students from the main train station to the university campus and of course this time of day it seems very very placid <laughs> it is really quiet now we just actually missed the about half an hour ago, we saw the, the first class with the rush hour. Yeah. Now it's really 11.30, it's, it's the quietest moment of the day. Yeah. Inviting. Yeah. By design. And yet, we've got lots parked out here. You haven't seen that yet. All right, so this is the main road into campus. And they are talking about closing this down to motor vehicle traffic, except for buses.
And what is this uh, chain link symbol here? <laughs> That's the, that's the um, symbol of the cycling highways in this region. Okay. I'm heading on the cycling highway towards Bodingen. Yep, perfect. And here's the soccer stadium. For football for everybody. Yeah, cycling with age, without age. Trike shop. Very nice to see them. Very, very peaceful through this park area. They even tried to uh, have the light poles here be sort of a rust color to mimic a tree. Doing everything they can to try to keep it as natural as possible. I think the red would have worked just fine, but they wanted to keep it gray. And we just exited the park. Oh, there's his office building where he works. So once we exited the park, we got the uh, red cycle path coloring again. Indicating that this is for bikes and for mobility devices, as we see here. And quite empowering for people with physical disabilities, being able to get around when you have a truly safe and inviting cycle network. everywhere. We used to have a priority crossing for cyclists here. Uh, we, had, we had to reverse it because too many accidents were happening. Uh, and one of the things uh, which is going on here, as you can see, it's quite a heavily used road. Right. Also quite a few cyclists, but there is a traffic light and a big intersection over there. And what they did was they had, had the, the priority crossing where now the pedestrian crossing is. And cyclists would, the cyclists were going downhill, so they would show up really fast because the intersection surprised the motorist and the motorist will probably more pay more attention to the traffic light and it could the, the really complex traffic situation so they didn't have any uh, capabilities left to watch out for cyclists yeah uh, so here we had to change priority and give it back to the motorist going east west still it's a two-stage crossing and you can still cross quite easily right but it's also a, a Dutch thing, we try something, sometimes it doesn't work, we evaluate, try again until we find the, the right solution and the right mix. What? You mean you're not perfect? You don't do it perfect really right each time? We, we, we do picture perfect. <laughs> picture perfect. Well, I mean, if you look at, at, at all the videos, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we do not tell the, the, the bad things. Of yeah, yeah, not. yeah, yeah, of course not. No. Yeah. But here's a good example. So he just waited till it was clear for him to make it across and did so. And we'll see some students here doing the same. And really, because they made it to that, uh, that refuge area, that first stage of refuge, uh, it, the, the motor vehicle saw that they were queuing up and, yeah. and, and allowed and, and, them and to get across. And there was also a queue for, so Anyways. are still low, yes. so there is this, uh, and also the travel lane is also quite narrow, it's for, for the uh, motorists, it's very clear that something is going on here. Yeah. So uh, it's not like in the, uh, many places in the US where you suddenly have this, this, this pedestrian crossing in the middle of, out of yeah, out, out of nowhere. Yeah. Because, and here the, the road really tells the, the motorists as well, hey, pay attention, there's something going on. Yeah. And that already helps. Look, now they've got a green light, and now you see the car speeding by, because yep. they want to catch the green light, I know they are not catching a red light, but... Yep. And now they can... Uh... Can you go across? Now look, oh, she, uh, she's going to make a right turn. Yep. Food delivery. Food delivery. It's lunchtime. Yeah. They're not in too much of a hurry. 
pressing the matter. I think they don't have got an assignment yet. Yeah. Otherwise they would have crossed. Yeah. They would have pushed the matter. So over here, we've got our symbol again. Yeah. So there is that symbol we were talking about earlier. And we've got a cycling street. And we've got cycling street. With gray in the middle. With gray and in the middle. And if you want to ask me why is the gray in the middle? That is why is it gray in the middle? Because of the BMW dealership right here. Ah, the yes. The BMW dealership was afraid that his customers, uh -huh. which would have to drive down this road to make a left here, uh -huh. that he would get confused and that he would be that he wouldn't be able to reach the dealership. Ah. So they put a bit of gray in the middle yeah. to signalize the BMW users that yes. there's still a roadway they can It's still down. a roadway yeah. they can use, yeah. In other words, and that's that's an important factor too, because sometimes when you see a road that is completely red all the way across, it could mean that there's limited access to, to motor vehicles. So so. There's a side cycling street, which is car, Correct. car, car guest, yeah. but still, it can confuse people. So there are yeah. a few, uh, so this, well, I don't think it's really necessary because we, we see, we, we've got quite a few cycling streets in the city, Right. but this was also, um, consensus which was found with the dealership yeah. to make this design work. Yeah. It's not the best, it's not perfect, but it got built. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because of the consensus with the dealership. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and it's still and it still works because it's still it primarily, really, you know. It works really nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it, it's still a feed strap no matter what. I will, I will show you yeah. a nicer example of feed And so that section there used to all be asphalt and they took that lane away, added some green elements, used some climate adaptation stuff and stormwater management. And as you can see, they're just very, very vibrant cycling streets. Lots of people using these very comfortable residential streets. 100, 200 meters a detour. We're now on a neighborhood stretch mm -hmm. instead of following the road with 40,000 cars a day. There's also a red light for cars and green lines for cycles. Yeah. And you can see just how much more comfortable this is compared to being over on that major road which you can see in the distance there. That's the major, major roadway that normally the path would have followed with a very, very short little diversion. We had a pleasant residential area with a feet stop. Quite comfortable through here. And then you can see our destination off what into the future. Here? This is a cycling street. And was, uh, we plan a cycling highway instead of keeping going road. People were opposed against it, living here on this street, because they, they lived on a street which was uh, functioning really well, they, they thought, so it had a bit of cycle lanes, mm -hmm. and it was much wider. And they said, we do not want to have a cycling street. Uh, I said, but we're going to add trees, we're going to add green spaces, uh, we're going to slow down traffic. And only until, until we said, hey, you get designated parking base uh, you get more space for your car to, to store it they then they really start liking it <laughs> but, uh, so, even they're the like oh, they're, they're like oh what's in it for me car parking okay sold <laughs> well they're almost like americans eh? well, it's, yeah. it's the same You're well very, it's human we're human right We're yes the yes is also a very very car dependent country yes exactly oh. exactly and, but if you look at the um, you can see this is about two three meters mm -hmm. of pavement we were able to cut away Part of it a parking base, but part of it is green space. So it's also once again stormwater management, climate adaptation, yeah. and it just feels a lot nicer. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's a really. Uh, and at the university did, did research, and they found out that the uh, as real estate values uh, were probably three percent higher due to the cycling street, right? Uh, compared to others in the city. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, realtors they advertise and said beautifully located on the cycling street. Right. You can see it in the advertisements when they sell out. Yeah. It's yeah. So cool. So the strip is so narrow that you do not confuse it with a cycle lane. You do not want to ride over it as a cyclist, so you stay out of it. Yeah. The first thing, it gets you out of the door zone. Right. Car cars. Second, yeah. 
put you a little bit more in the middle of the road so you're more of a barrier to uh, to cars who want to overtake you and that actually sick and uh, and thirdly it narrows optically the road down for motorists and also for, for cyclists but for motorists it matters it narrows it down so cars they, they tend to move more towards the middle and when they meet they have to swerve a little bit to pass each other but that again slows the car down because it optically looks narrower right but effecti effectively you can use it so it's effective with so in terms of a semi or a truck or whatever uses it they can use the strip to pass each other so it's a very small detail but it narrows down the road optically slows down traffic and makes people more aware of the surroundings and how they should behave on this street make it too wide people will use it as cycling make it too narrow and you lose the effect right Yep. They Brilliant. Can see it on the cyclists, they really stay a little bit more out of the, out of the out of the side than they would use than they normally would use to. Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. N little detail. Li little, little, details. little little details. It's little little details that matter. Yeah. Love and it. I, I've known whom you've been speaking to, so most people yeah, who yeah. you've been speak, speaking to do not know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Love it. And now we're heading down the feet strut here. And again, the sinusoidal speed bump, really designed to be comfortable for people on bikes, but really kind of slow down the drivers. And again, we're taking a little bit more in the middle of the lane here. And again, avoiding the bricks, the fringe we were just talking about. Very comfortable environment. Waiting for our indication to go, and here we go. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a little bit too narrow, especially that way between the trees. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this road is um, it's so narrow, you see the beautiful trees. If you want right. to make segregation, you need to cut down the trees, which is actually a no-go. You, you right. do not want to do that. Right. But you can also see that this is um, currently it's, it's quite easy traffic. Mm -hmm. Especially during rush hour, you've got quite a few cars going back and forth. You see that the cycle lanes do not really offer that nice, comfortable, at ease protection you would like. Um, in terms of a network development, this is not the main cycling route. There is another route going east-west a little bit. Um, north side is a little bit down there and down there there are other cycling routes which we say hey those are the main cycling routes but nonetheless you need to be able to ride a bike here and it's really finding the middle field uh, and this road in my opinion is due to reconsideration uh, but it's uh, yeah but now I'm speaking as inhabitants yeah because I mean one of the main things that you'd have to kind of look at is how do you reroute traffic so that it's less of a priority uh, exactly. route for cars. And, and, and that's, that's where you see that the city planners sometimes say we want to use this route for, if, even if it goes through a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is a neighborhood which isn't, well, they're not, this, this is not the most political powerful neighborhood. And there is a new development coming up over there with, mm -hmm. with 20,000 houses and some people from the municipality have already said, well, this road can still use a little bit more traffic. Right. And so there is this, this tension between um, where you see that, that because these neighborhoods, part of it is social housing, mm -hmm. but they're, they're, they're simply not as vocal as, as, as the richer neighborhoods in the east of the town. Right. And, and uh, not, not as easy to get yeah, in contact with the council and council members. Right. So that's, it's, 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 it's a challenge, I think, from a planner's perspective. How do you look upon these streets? Because they serve a function, they're important for the neighborhoods. Right. But you do not want to have them uh, have, have these copious amounts of fuel traffic, which which they could only right. facilitate. Yeah. And that trade-off of having just a painted bike lane, you know, which is clearly not an all a comfortable all ages and abilities type of facility. I think it's still better than nothing. True. It because is. Because yeah. once again optically down down the road, sure. it makes it really clear. And there are uh, a bit further down, it gets protected, mm -hmm. and then a cycle lane again. I think you also have to look at this road in stages. This mm -hmm. is the most difficult part. Right. A bit further, there's a bit of segregation and other facilities. Mm -hmm. And the improvements, yeah, well, the improvements are being done in cycles. And I think uh, currently the, the part towards the east, 
Mm -hmm. It's up for improvement also with the sewage. Yeah. So there is an opportunity, the cyclists are right, we can now do stuff. Right. But from a planning perspective, you should not get all your eggs in the basket on the main road, but try to find an off-road, an off-grid network. And this is, a, I think, a main... So it's a planning challenge. Uh, yeah. Because you also want to have safety on these roads. So there's this trade-off, the offset. It's, it's really finding the balance where you're going to invest your money. And this is yeah. one of the challenges which I've been working with as a planner for the last uh, 15 years. So. Yep. Yeah, and, and this is these are the real problems, the real challenges that, you know, Definitely, it's yeah. the real world. It's not. It's not what you see on in your theoretical books and and, <laughs> and everything. It's it, this is the real challenge. These are the challenges, and uh, yeah, definitely, this is the real challenge. And I can show you the, the the good and the beauty, beautiful stuff. But I think you're still able to ride here. People, most people, still ride ride down this road on a bicycle because sure. parts of it are segregated. Parts of it are, are, are fairly good, and parts are, I mean, not that good, but still there is a cycle lane, still the functions. And we've got alternatives in the network available. They might be yeah. a little bit longer, yep. but they completely traffic cold. Yeah. Uh, and now is the time to start the discussion about the function of this road as well. Yeah. And so the road used to go straight through here, and you can see how that's been cut down. Yep, see the old tracks right here. And again, you've got some permeable pavers over in that area. And, and there you can, you, that's a priority table. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, traffic on the, on, the, on the cycling street has priority over traffic coming from the side. Right. Use, the function is a table and a speed bump, a speed bump at once. Yeah. There's a driveway actually, legally. So it really also slows down most traffic on the road. Yeah. Very, very nicely done. And as you can see here, again, some nice attention to storm water management too. Lots of stuff soaking up the water. So much better than the pavement that used to be there. Brilliant. And you can see just slow, how slowly those motor vehicles proceeded through that space. Nice. So you can, it's it's free view, you can actually use it. Yeah. So much better. Yeah. Very nice. And why do you think the decision uh, to do the bricks here, just to keep the motor vehicle speeds down? No, it's more of an architectural thing. Okay, because architectural. Because thing is, hey, it, 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 it keeps speed down, but mm -hmm. the main consideration was, I think, the way the street looks. Okay, okay. Architects like it. Okay. We actually had to fight to get a speed bump in there. Right. Because I didn't want to include a speed bump there, because it was too expensive. Right. Uh, so we had to, to, to discuss it with the city, but it's, it's, it's a bit of a, uh, uh, it's more of an architectural thing and they actually, the architects also want to have uh, bricks uh, as a, uh, on the cycling paths. Right. Which uh, in the long term, well, short term it's really, it's pretty good because it goes when they're laid nicely, it, 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 it's smooth. Yeah. But if you have heavy traffic on it, give it three or four years and it will get bumpy and annoying and yeah. it's, just, it's not, not as comfortable as uh, asphalt. Yeah, yeah, the asphalt is definitely more comfortable to ride on. And this is a very typical Dutch home and interestingly there's like four, it's a row. Mm -hmm. The middle houses, they, they don't have, they've got a back garden access through this, sm this small alley here. Okay. It's very Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this driveway construction, yeah. the speed run really works well if you, if you want to enter this road at the car drive. Yeah. Uh, there's a traffic light here, and you can turn right there, but if it's a red, we used to do a red, a red road here, to the street. Mm -hmm. Because this speed bump is now here, we see a lot less red 
rat, rat running. running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very, very simple. Just put in a little speed bump. Yeah, Just and like a that. table and also continuous sidewalk. So it's all uh, also all ages and abilities and right. ADA uh, compliant. Right. Because you, you can keep on walking. Uh, yeah. It's very in a wheelchair or whatever. It's really for um, uh, the ADA compliant and yeah. really easy to implement. Yeah. And you can see that. Get a good view of it here. A continuous sidewalk right through here. Creating a speed table, slowing down the cars. little bit too narrow but it's an improvement over what it used to be like but it's still better than it was exactly. yeah narrow up the uh, the motor vehicle lanes even further yeah, right. <laughs> they're already narrower than they should be yeah the two meters 75 yeah there's a bus six times an hour for it, I'm actually running on this. Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, I'd say saved lives is better than a couple mirrors here and there. <laughs> Imagine there's one floor of bicycle parking, I think two or maybe three floors of car parking. Right, right. There. right. So, yeah. technically, it's really easy. Yeah. I think there are, uh, each floor can hold 60 cars or one and a half thousand bicycles. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your decision in terms of capacity and effectiveness? Yeah. And as you can see, most of the square is almost bicycle free. Right. So there's also a regime here that says, hey, there is a good bicycle parking facility. Right. You're not allowed to park your bike in the vicinity of the bicycle parking. Right. And keep the space safe, free and open. Yep. And if you make it convenient, people will use it. Exactly. Yeah. People will use it and you can yeah. see there's this, this heavy bike, but there's this, uh, this rail which slows down the bike when going down. Yeah. And there's this, um, small escalator mm -hmm. which uh, which drags your your, uh, your bicycle up. Right. So, uh, helps you helps you bring it back up. Yeah. Some people need to be in a city with Right. Cars. Yeah. As you can see this street is a dead end for cars. We have to turn right again and we can keep it going inside. And he's looking he's looking for a bicycle. Yeah. And what did we do today? We toured the city of Nijmegen today. Yeah. And we saw some of the best infrastructure in the world, but also some of the worst infrastructure the Netherlands has to offer. We looked at the examples, we discussed them, and looked what can we learn, what can we take home, and what's interesting about uh, all the things we have designed and where we're heading to in this uh, beautiful city in the south of the Netherlands. Thank you so very much. It was awesome. You're welcome. Yay! And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.